It's true that the term wardrobe malfunction is a fairly recent addition to our cultural lexicon. Remember that fateful Super Bowl halftime show back in 2004 involving a certain Mr. Timberlake, Miss Jackson, and that now infamous flash of partial nudity? We still don't quite understand the outrage that the media erupted in because of that, but it certainly had a major impact on society. That might have been the notorious event that first brought the term itself into popular culture, even leading to Merriam-Webster eventually adding the phrase to their collegiate dictionary. But just because we didn't have a term for the rather exposing incident before 2004 doesn't mean it was a new phenomenon. Things have been going awry with celebrities' garments since the dawn of stardom itself. However, not all wardrobe malfunctions are quite the same kind of fleshy exposure that you might be thinking of. Some rather infamous wardrobe flubs in Hollywood have more to do with poor planning and absent-minded directing than they do with indecent exposure. Let's take a little walk back through showbiz history and discover some of the most obvious wardrobe woes that made their way to the big screen without seeing an editor's chopping block. Factsverse presents The Worst Wardrobe Malfunctions Not Edited Out of Movies. Before we start exposing Hollywood's most revealing secrets, make sure you show us a little support by clicking the like button and subscribing to our channel. Tap the bell icon to turn on notifications so you don't have to miss another one of our videos. Raiders of the Lost Ark, Blue Jeans and a White Tee You'd be hard-pressed to find a Cairo native walking around Egypt in the 1930s wearing anything close to modern Western attire. In fact, traditionally most people in those days would wear a garment called a galabaya, which was essentially a cross between a long, wide shirt and a robe. In Steven Spielberg's freshman Indiana Jones offering, there's a scene where he sits at a counter nursing his boozy beverage, sulking over his perceived loss of the love of his life. In the scene, you see many local folks strolling through the streets wearing traditional garb. But one thing is out of place. Just to the left of Indy's right shoulder and directly beside his bottle of spirits, you can clearly see a man perusing down the street with a white t-shirt and blue jeans. Marty McFly, is that you? Glory, wristwatch. Morgan Freeman, Matthew Broderick, Denzel Washington, and Carrie Elwes all starred in one of the greatest films about the Civil War to ever hit the big screen. Glory told the tale of the Union Army's 2nd African-American Regiment, the 54th Massachusetts Infantry Regiment. As powerful as the film was, not to mention expertly cast, something made it through to the final cut that was wildly out of place. When the 54th Mass marched by a recently liberated slave plantation, several black children wave at them in a very encouraging gesture. The problem is one of them was clearly wearing a digital wristwatch. In 1863, no one was wearing any kind of wristwatch, let alone a digital one. In fact, the first incarnation of the wristwatch wouldn't see the light of day until 1868, and the first wristwatch to hit the market wouldn't be sold for another 53 years in 1904, thanks to the craftsmanship of Louis Cartier. Braveheart, kilts. Um, somebody tell Mel Gibson he needs to do his homework. As iconic of a film as Braveheart is, there's one glaring historical inaccuracy in the film that might irk the living heck out of a historian. Nope, it wasn't the Scottish face paint. At least that's an accurate display of markings typical of that period. The problem lies with the kilts. As authentic as they may look, the kilt wouldn't be invented until the 16th century. FYI, Braveheart takes place in the 13th century. Nice try, Mel, but you can't expect us to overlook that blunder. Dirty Dancing, Short Shorts Dirty Dancing's lead, Baby, sure looked great in those denim cutoffs. There's just a little problem with this wardrobe choice that doesn't sit right with us. The flick supposedly takes place in 1963, and despite the fact that there have been some ballsy teenagers back in the day pushing their limits and infuriating their parents and pastors, short shorts like the kind she wears wouldn't be popularized until the 70s, with a little help of folks like Patti Smith, Debbie Harry, and Daisy Duke. But don't worry, baby. We won't tell anyone you're secretly a time traveler. Your secret's safe with us. The Last Samurai, Antiquated Armor The Last Samurai was a decent flick. Rotten Tomatoes agrees. Tom Cruise played Captain Nathan Algren, a retired U.S. military officer commissioned by the Emperor of Japan to help train the somewhat behind-the-curve country's first army in the modern implementation of warfare. The film is great because it shows the crossroads of the bygone era of the samurai and the technological advancements of modern warfare. 
Too bad the production team couldn't get the samurai armor historically right. Instead of putting Cruz in accurate of the age garb, they decked him out in armor that hadn't been used for over two centuries, just because it looked cooler or something. The Other Bolin Girl, Natalie Portman's Hair Portman's 2008 romantic period piece suffered from mediocre reviews and was riddled with historical inaccuracies. Many of those mistakes were somewhat intentional, hoping audiences would either not notice or simply not care. One glaringly obvious issue with the costume design, however, involved Portman's hood. In 16th century France, it would have been considered wildly unbefitting of a woman of rank to allow her uncovered hair to be seen out in public. She would have worn a veil that was attached to the hood with her hair pulled back underneath so as not to inspire any scandalous reactions. Not quite the kind of indecent exposure we associate with the term wardrobe malfunction today, but it was certainly a wardrobe flub, to say the least. Schindler's List – Shaved Pits Master filmmaker Steven Spielberg shows up on this list yet again, this time with his culturally significant masterpiece about the Holocaust, Schindler's List. As impacting as the film was for its portrayal of such a dark period in world history, it isn't free from historical inaccuracies and errors. The women in the Krakow concentration camp would never have been supplied with razor blades of any kind. That would have been wildly problematic to their malicious Nazi captors. Every woman in those camps, however, in the film had smooth legs and armpits, an issue that is commonly overlooked by viewers of the heart-wrenching film. To be fair, who really pays attention to small details like that when the rest of the film is so jaw-droppingly fantastic? Back to the Future, Marty McFly's Electric Guitar before someone calls us out in the comments section, yes, we know a guitar isn't exactly a piece of most people's wardrobe per se, but for Marty McFly in the first installment of the Back to the Future series, it was certainly a crucial part of his persona and aesthetic. In the second act of the film, there's that uber-famous scene, after Marty accidentally makes out with his mom, that he gets down and dirty playing Johnny B. Good on his Gibson ES-345. Everything starts off pretty groovy until Marty can't help but whip out some rather intense metal riffs that the attendees of the high school dance weren't quite ready for. But as Marty insisted, their kids were gonna love it. It's a fantastic scene except one tiny little detail. That guitar wouldn't be manufactured until 1958, and as we all know, Marty's temporal troubles take him back to November 5th, 1955. Granted, the trilogy does all revolve around time travel, so an out-of-time guitar is probably not the most shocking anachronistic artifact to be found in 1955, but it's still worth mentioning. Pirates of the Caribbean – The British Navy's Uniforms So yeah, we're going to take a film series that has dozens upon dozens of historical inaccuracies and hone in on one pretty trivial one to take issue with. This is the internet, what do you expect? Anyway, so the British Navy was depicted as wearing bright red coats for the nautical film that was set in the 1720s. Although it's true that the military did wear a shade of red at the time called Matter Lake in those years, it was actually a much duller and less costly shade of red than the bright scarlet that would be introduced for officers and sergeants in 1747. Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl, Cowboy Hat Okay, okay, if you don't think that first pirate's wardrobe malfunction was significant enough to make our list, how about this one? Just after Jack Sparrow utters the line, On deck, you scabrous dogs, you can very clearly see a man in the top left corner of the screen, just above Jack's shoulder, wearing a tan-colored cowboy hat, sunglasses, and a white t-shirt looking off into the sea. Either that extra showed up to the wrong set, or he somehow accidentally ended up slipping through to the final cut, unbeknownst to the rest of the production team. Otherwise, there's also the very slim chance that the cowboy wannabe was there to wrangle some sea cows. Wizard of Oz, Dorothy's Magical Hair we can make a whole video highlighting all the mistakes in The Wizard of Oz, and who knows, we might just do that. But one particularly obvious wardrobe problem that can be clearly seen in a watch-through of the iconic 1939 film is how Dorothy's hair keeps changing lengths. One moment, it's luxuriously long, and in the very next scene, it's a foot shorter. Then before you know it, she grows it all right back in a matter of seconds. The flub happened because of the film being filmed out of sequence, and with various necessary reshoots at later dates. Today, Judy Garland would have been required by producers to keep her hair at the same length for the entirety of the principal and secondary photography process. Okay, we could keep doing this all day, picking apart every wardrobe malfunction that has ever made its way to the cinema, but that wraps our list for today. 
Now it's time to hear from you, our lovely Faxverse audience. What was your favorite wardrobe malfunction on this list? Did you see that guy in the jeans and t-shirt in Indiana Jones? Or are you more enthralled by Dorothy's ever-changing hairdo? Let us know what you think in the comments section. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe to Faxverse for more videos like this.